How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about Portland, Oregon. There's been about 80 days of nothing but riots, pandemonium, chaos, violence, just general lawlessness in the city. Now, if you go out there and ask them on the ground, the people that are engaging in the violence, if you ask them, hey, why are you doing this? What's really going on? What is your purpose? They'll say, oh, well, look, we are here for Black Lives Matter. All lives don't matter until black lives matter. That's what they'll tell you. Now, it doesn't really make sense because why you got to burn down somebody's house to say that black lives matter? Why are you beating up random people in the street because black lives matter? What does I got to do with it? Now, there was one particular incident that happened. I think this was last night, which was on Sunday, August 16th, 2020, that encapsulates all the issues that are going on right now with Portland, Oregon. Now, I'm going to roll it as I'm talking. If you want to see like the full uncensored clips, because some of it is really violent. I can't play it all here. If you want to see the full and uncensored clips, I'll link to that in the description box below so you can see it in full. But here's the story. Now, you have the BLM people blocking roads or being in the middle of the street as they are all over the country. I'm not really sure why they're doing this. But anyway, so. They got like little makeshift roadblocks where they're halfway in the street and one guy's trying to drive through in his white pickup truck, as you can see on the screen. Now, for some reason, these BLM so-called protesters, really rioters, insurrectionists want to come up to the guy's window. You know, they're really aggressive. They're cussing and fussing. They're trying to pull him out the car, they're trying to open the door. They're trying to punch him through his car. Like for some reason, his windows are rolled down. Or they may have gotten the window down and they're trying to punch him in the car. I think his wife or somebody was with him. A woman was with him. They're trying to assault this man and his passenger because I don't really know because they're white. And they're trying to drive from point A to point B going through this little protest area. But they are cussing him. And it gets to the point where he has to speed off to try and evade these people. They're throwing things at him. They're doing all kinds of stuff. Now... In the midst of him speeding off, maybe because he's, he's scared, he doesn't know what's going on, or somebody got in his way. I don't really know what happened, but he crashed his truck into a light pole. So when he crashed his truck, he couldn't really go anywhere. I think the car was probably immobile. So at a certain point, he gets out of the truck. This is where things go totally bad. Um, the BLM so-called protesters, really rioters, come up to him. And they are pushing them on the ground. They're interrogating them, talking about, oh, you're trying to run us over. Uh, wait till the cops get here. All kind of crazy stuff. Now, there's one individual that kind of stands out. Um, I think I know his name, but I don't have confirmation, so I can't say it. If I get confirmation, I'll link to that in the description box below. But this guy appears to be a radical biracial. And when I say radical biracial, what I mean is somebody that is biracial and is so conflicted about, you know, not being black enough, not being white enough that they want to overcompensate and then do things like, you know, beat random white guys up, which is what this man did. Now, when the guy got out of the truck, he was the main person, you know, trying to cuss and using the N-word a lot just to let you know that he's black. And he's like trying to fight him right there. But the guy's on the ground just sitting there trying to talk to his wife on the phone trying to call her he's just like hey man i don't want no problems like everything is everything is good everything is peaceful then here comes the radical biracial guy at a certain point running from behind the guy and he kicks him in his head and his head falls and hits the ground he bounces off the ground and he was laying there unconscious for a while now, I don't know his condition. I don't think that he's passed away. Hopefully not. I mean, please, I don't want, you know, that that would be the worst case scenario, but he didn't look good. He was out of it for a minute. They're trying to move him around. He just wasn't really going. And you saw some of the clips. It was like blood up under his head. I'm not really sure how much he had been bleeding, but obviously he did because he got sucker kicked. Really, he was sitting on the ground and his back was to the guy that ran up on him, kicked him in the head. He had no way to defend himself or to brace himself for the fall. So once he got kicked, it was a direct flush hit with his jaw and his, just his face area. And then his head just hit the ground because he didn't know what hit him. Not to, not to be funny, but I'm just being serious. So the guy, like I said, we don't know who that is that did that, but they'll find him. I'm pretty sure they'll find him and then they'll get him locked up, hopefully. 
hopefully they're able to lock them up. Hopefully the, the mayor in Portland and the governor, you know, let the police lock that guy up and lock everybody out there up that was harassing this man and his wife or whoever that was in the car with him. OK, now let's talk about these people that were out there and the people that did that in general. They say they're against police brutality. They say they want to have the police defunded. They say that black lives matter. They say they're not out there engaging in just general lawlessness. It's about black lives matter. It's a protest. Now, what kind of protests are you guys going to run up on people that are on the ground, minding their own business and kicking them, cussing, all kind of stuff, you know, trying to punch them in the car, forcing them out of the car. And then the way they were talking was like how police would talk, you know, get on the ground, don't move. But they're behaving in a way that is above and beyond what any police officer would do. And if they did that, they wouldn't get away with it. But at the same time, they want to say that police brutality is a problem and you got to defund the police because you have police brutality. How does this make any sense? What they want to do, meaning the BLM so-called protesters, what they want to do is to replace the police with themselves. So they want to go from regular law abiding police officer to judge dread to robocop that's kind of what's going on every single time i see these blm people trying to you know enforce the law or their own little rules they go way above and beyond we saw that in chas chop in free out of washington okay you had two young black men well one was 16 years old a boy because he's underage one 16 year old boy and a 19 year old young man shot and killed by blm so-called security if you had regular police there, if you had law and order there, I'm 99.99% sure that those two men would still be alive today. Well, the, the one young man and the one boy would still be alive today. But because BLM wouldn't be so militant and, you know, above the law in their own mind with the way that they so-called police areas, their lives are now gone. And the same thing with that guy. The guy that did the kick was so-called BLM security. Um, from what I've seen, he is allegedly an, an armed guard by trade. That's what I'm seeing allegedly. And in the video clips, you're able to see that he had security on his clothing, on his person. It was right there. It might have been on his back and also on like his front. So this guy allegedly is security, but look at the way that he's behaving. No police officer could behave that way. That guy, you know what? I'm willing to bet that guy probably wanted to go to the police academy, but when you got that kind of behavior, you would, you would never get through the academy. You would never, ever get through, you would never get to the academy with that kind of behavior that I saw on tape, okay? This whole thing with BLM is no more than just a, a power grab for some politicals. It's a money grab for some politicals. I saw that Act Blue gave a bunch of money to Joe Biden's campaign, and if you don't know about Act Blue, that's a payment processor for a lot of Democratic party officials, you know, politicians or whatever. It's also how BLM gets their donation money through Act Blue as a payment processor. Now, like I said before in the live stream and other videos, I'm not Albert Einstein. I don't know everything in the world, but if you are a payment processor and you're an actual company that does this, that's what you do. You're, the way you make money is from taking the piece of each transaction that comes to your platform. I'm not sure how much they take. They could take I don't know, less than 5%, 20%. I have no idea how much they take, but they're going to take some. And if you're able to have millions of dollars come through your payment process, maybe even billions of dollars coming through your payment processing place, you're going to have a pretty penny. So Act Blue itself gave to Joe Biden's campaign. So if you were out there donating to Black Lives Matter, if you are a person that gave $20 million to Black Lives Matter after George Floyd died, understand this. None of that money went to George Floyd's family at all. His brother got on TV and said, hey, we did not get one red dime from Black Lives Matter. All right. That money went to Black Lives Matter itself. And it also went to Act Blue because they're the payment processing company and they're taking their fee. And Act Blue itself gave money to Joe Biden's campaign. I ain't talking about the money that came to Joe Biden directly through Act Blue. I'm talking about Act Blue specifically giving their own piece of the pie, a piece of that pie to joe biden all right that's what's going on it's about money it's about power and it's about these crazy people these crazy radical nut jobs on the ground just wanting to hurt people that's what's going on the guy that did that 
in my humble opinion, a radical biracial, you know, not black enough, not white enough. And then wants to overcompensate for not being black. Go to talk, I'm black, I'm black, using the N word, hurting people. That's not what being black is. Really, ain't no such thing as being black. It's just about you being yourself. Whoever you are, whatever you do, just do that. Okay, your race, that's fine, that's one thing, but you gotta have your own individual personality. You can't try to, you know, make a personality be a specific race. That's not how this thing works. Just be yourself. You wanna go above and beyond and try to overcompensate. That's not how this life is. But different story, I digress. My whole point is that. Um, the guy that did that, I don't know his name for 100% certain, but I might know it. If I get confirmation, I'll let you know in the description box below. But a guy that did that needs to go to Gitmo, Big Rocks, Little Rocks all day long. Okay, he might even need to get something else if the guy dies. And I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? Do you think that the riots in Portland are riots or are they peaceful protests? Whatever your comments on that are, let me know in the comments below. Do you think that... We need to bring in the, the federales from D.C. to places like Portland and Freeattle and Chicago or wherever else they're needed. If that's your viewpoint. Let me know why in the comments below. You know where I stand. We got to put it into this. See, my thing is, if you are a BLM supporter, protester, whatever, and you're out there, you get caught up in the melee, that's your own fault. But see, I'm worried about the regular innocent people that have nothing to do with anything, okay? People that might even vote conservative in Portland because let's be clear, you might live on the West Coast or as I call it, the left coast, but you may not be a raging, stomp down, stone cold liberal. You might be just a regular normie that's trying to go to work every day, take care of your kids, take care of your parents or whatever the case may be. You don't want to engage in the BLM stuff. You vote against the BLM stuff, but you out there caught up in it. Okay, Portland had more homicides in june or july than all of 2019 combined combined all right so if anybody wants to tell me oh blm then largely peaceful no there are no more peaceful protests if you're out there you know quote unquote protesting peacefully for blm you're not peaceful because you are aiding in the bodies that are out there that eventually go down this road of destruction and madness and you're also giving legitimacy to this organization and to this battle cry screed of Black Lives Matter, okay? You're aiding and abetting the movement even if you're not doing it yourself. It's like harboring a fugitive. You might be a regular clean cut everyday Joe, going to work, coming home, going to school or whatever, but meanwhile, you got an ex murderer in your basement. Let him get out, okay? Don't harbor the fugitive. Don't enable these lawless, ridiculous, violent cretins. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.